Okay, so we get started? Sure. We can. So I'll uh, sort of kick it off and introduce it uh, for us. So this is Bart, and welcome all who are here tonight for our June fly tying session. I believe we're going to take a hiatus for the next couple of months, but uh, as everyone goes fishing, but uh, to, tonight Forrest Component is our guest tire. And he is going to tie a couple of patterns for east side lakes that I guess were highly successful. And I think will probably work just as well on west side lakes uh, for all you folks starting to go up to Goose. And so I'm just going to turn it over to him. A couple items of protocol. If we could all put our computers on mute, uh, except if you're going to ask a question. And then you can punch back in. Otherwise, we can sort of keep the background noise down. And uh, keep from and quick keep from switching screens back and forth. So if you could go on mute, um, and with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Forrest. Forrest. Hey, thanks. Yeah, we had some really good luck with these flies. I passed them all around. I had a few, and I ended up with none because I kept passing them out, and people wanted more of them because they were they were doing so well. Like we had two people from uh, some club in uh, Oregon Bend. And, uh, and I gave them one of those and they caught so many fish on them that on it that they went home and went back to the motel that night, tied up a whole bunch for themselves and we didn't see them again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I've got a few because I stole that pattern from them. Okay. The first one I'm going to tie is a, is a fly that, that we've had for a couple of years that I, uh, that I dreamt up one time. Uh, Steve, Steve Cushing is... Yeah, well, Steve Cushing loves this thing. It's uh, it's a little bit out of focus here. Anyway, damsel fly nymph, and um, it's really pretty easy to tie. So we'll so I'll tie one of these up, and and you guys will be able to tie these right away. They're they're pretty easy. Actually, work really well. You, you fish a damselfly nymph close to the surface from the beach, cast out and bring it in towards the beach. These little guys swim into the grass, climb up on the grass and, and hatch. So, um, or molt. So, so damselfly nymph, here we go. First thing we're gonna do is use some scudback. And you can use olive, oh, by the way, Damselflies come in different colors. So depending on the color of the, the, the environment that they're in, they can be anywhere from tan to brown to olive colors. So, you know, take a look what you see when you're out there and, when, you know, you can go tie some that color and maybe they'll work better than uh, uh, others. I don't know, I just tie an olive one. Um, it seems to work for me. So. First thing I use is a scud back, and this will end up being the wing case, but I put it on first. And what I do is put it over the hook eye facing forward, okay? You gotta, oh, just a minute, let me get started. You have to uh, hold it in place because it really likes to squirm around the hook. Um, Get some tools out there. Forrest, what size is the hook? Uh, this is a size 12. Uh, you can you can tie it on a 12 or a, a 14 standard uh, dry fly or, or wet fly hook. This one is a 12. So, I'm going to Put that right on there and tie it down. And you see how it likes to squirm? It's, tur it's turning already here. It's best if it's right over the top of the eye. Okay. Next thing it goes on is uh, I just use a black bead chain for the eyes. I really don't care about 
weight too much because I'm gonna fish these right under the right under the surface. And I want this to go on right behind the hook eye. I wish I had, you know, smaller fingers. Dang it. Hold on, bear with me, you guys. I'm trying to <laughs> keep dropping it. Right behind the hook eye, a bunch of figure eights there. We'll put it in place. Can you guys see this okay? It's, it looks a little bit fuzzy to me. You hid what you were doing so well, I thought it was proprietary. No, no, no thanks. That's like I said, I wish I had smaller fingers. Okay, now I'm just gonna wrap back to, to the hook bend on this and I'll install the tail, which is going to be marabou. Uh, look for it, get, get into the good marabou. Don't get that stuff that's stuck together and use about eight or 10 marabou fibers for the tail. That's probably about three eighths of an inch worth of that stuff, like, like that. And you try and make the tail about an inch, an inch and a quarter long, roughly, like yay. So that will get tied right onto the butt end of this fly. Just like that. Trim. You can trim it out to about where the eyeballs are. That'll give you a little more, uh, a little bit thicker body once you get dubbing it here. Sure. So I'm all dubbing. I'm using a rabbit with Antron here, but anything I think anything like this will work. I try to leave it a little bit fuzzy so. It looks buggy you know but uh, it should it, this will work this is what I like to use it's it's really good dubbing for this kind of a fly I'm gonna do one thing here that you don't usually do on a fly I'm gonna do a figure eight around the eyes All right, there's the body. Now, I'm gonna take this feather off of a pheasant rump. I call it the church window feather, like that, the little blue one off of the, the uh, pheasant rump. And I'm gonna make the legs from this. And this is how it goes. Here's the, here's the feather. I'm gonna take, cut the center out and make a chevron shape with about maybe four or five of those fibers sticking out of each side. 
So I'll try and do this so you can see it. Just like that. Okay, now this is gonna go on the top of the body. And have no fear when you put the scud back over that as a wing case, it will push those legs down so they actually look like legs. Okay, see that? See that? And then the scud back comes back over the front of the eyes and gets tied down right there, but right there behind the eye. You can clip this off to about an eighth of an inch. And that's it. Pretty simple fly to tie. And, uh, and we've had really good luck with it over the years. Better luck than I've had with my package tool. Okay. If you can see that a little better. I will also uh, just break in and say that uh, I'm I am recording this session and um, I'll make it available up on our YouTube channel a little bit later this month for those who want to see this again. Because you tied fast there, Forrest. I do. Damselfly. Anybody wants it, they can have it. <laughs> okay, here's the closest. <laughs> here's the next one. This is the one that just slayed them over there this spring for some reason or another. We call it, it didn't have a name for it really, but I, in homage to uh, Chuck or the Denny Way's Olive Willie. Um, or Chuck, Chuck ties them now and he ties them really nice ones. I call this the Peacock Willie. So that's what it is. That's what it is today. Now, let me uh, get my other materials out here. So take me just a second. So our buddy Russ Flaskerud, if everybody can hear me, said the Olive Willie was killing him up at Goose Lake last week. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Chuck uses that thing exclusively up there at uh, Goose. It's a really good fly, and it's a lot like this one, only it uses, uh, uh, it's pretty much all green, just like the damsel fly. It has a uh, green marabou tail, green dubbing, uh, I think it's a marabou dubbed body and a green hackle with a red bead. This well, one makes uses... it like you've heard of Swede, right? It's got the fly shop over in Spokane. I don't know that. I don't know. Yeah, that's the one that Russ follows that pattern. This one uses again this same feather from the pheasant uh, for the tail and the hackle. It uses a peacock for the body and uh, a red wire rib and then a red bead. And, and I weight it. I usually fish it with a, with a floating line in a standard nine foot leader. And I'm, uh, lots of the time I'll be just towing it around. And it usually fishes that way about three feet deep. And, you, know, you can see the fish flash when they take it and it's they were they were just banging these things hard i mean there was no nibbling or anything they were just banging them they, 
it was amazing. So, so uh, this is this is turned into a fly that's got a whole bunch in my fly box now. Yeah, and I hope it's the same for you guys because it's a it's a really really good fly. Where was that for us? What was what? Where was that? Was that at Chris or where was where were they no, really that, going for that? That was over, that was over in uh, Ephrata. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, it was at Deep Lake and uh, well, mainly Deep Lake for me, although I really had good luck with them in uh, Burke Lake. What size, what size is this? What size is it? This, this is a number 12 um, nymph hook. Okay. Is this other one is thicker. First thing we're going to do is put the beads on. I use these little red beads that are clear glass with, uh, they have a shiny silver in the middle through the hole and they, they seem to uh, show up a lot better in the water. And uh, you can get those at our favorite fly shop, Joanne's. You all see it? Right there. We're trying to focus this a little better. Oh yeah, that looks good there. Awesome. Um, I'm using an Ultra 280 on this red, but you can also use um, red UV 6 aught and uh, kind of like the 6 aught better than this, but it, it, this works fine. And there it is. Let's take it. I'm gonna wrap this back and up again. And then I'll give it a little bit of a lump there behind the bead just to kind of hold it in place. Now, I weighed it with uh, lead-free 15 thousandths. I'm gonna look at the screen. 15 thousandths lead-free. And I like to use red wire because I, I think red is a good color. And, and this, this shows up through the body really nicely. Don't ever use your good scissors for wire. And I'm gonna start both of these wires together right at the top of the body in front right behind the eye or the bead. So I'm starting both wires there. Going back up to the front and I'll wrap on the lead wire. You know, with all that lead, it fishes about three feet deep. Mm -hmm. That's trolling it. I'm going to wrap this right up to the bead. If you look at the picture in the in the barb, you see that the red 
thread is really wide and and I don't really like it like that. I, I'd rather wrap this peacock, uh, the wire, the peacock and the red wire all the way up to the eye. And then after I do the hackle, that'll, that'll keep that little collar of thread thinner, which is, which I prefer. Couple of times up and down here, keep the wire on. And we'll go for some peacock. I like to keep my peacock pearls in a cigar tube. So there's a little hack for you. It, it keeps them straight and, and they don't get broken or anything. Yeah, but they, they get lung cancer from it. Don't stick your nose in the cigar tube. <laughs> Um, I'm going to use three. You got to put a tail on that? Oh, you know what? I forgot the tail. Thank you, Don. <laughs> I'll pay attention. I'll pay attention. <laughs> that was a test. That, that happens to a lot of tires who are demonstrating. Just leave wings off. And so, so I like, again, I'm using the blue feather off the rump of the pheasant. I'm just going to cut uh, a few off there, bend them down flat like that. So when you cut them there, the tips grow all together. And I'll just put this tail on. It's like that's where it belongs. He was making the caddis version, but now you've made him put a tail on. I know it. God, ruined everything. Hey, I'm using three peacock curls. I'm going to make a chenille out of these. I don't have one of Gary's fancy twisters. <laughs> so I have to do it my way. Which is like this. I'm going to make a loop. Bring it up. Make sure you bring these up together. Because if you don't, you won't get the twist proper on the Okay, you're going to bring those all together the loop and the pearls. The pearl's not inside the loop, right? It's just with it. I'm sorry? Uh, the pearl is. Uh, adjacent to the loop, not you didn't actually try to put the hurl inside. No, I didn't. Uh, you know what? This is uh, Yeah, right there. My hackle pliers won't work, and he's getting me, he's re rescuing me. Thank you. If you have that fancy spin on mine, do if you want. No, thanks. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to. Twist this up till I get a chenille going on here with the, with the peacock. Takes a little bit. Don't pull too hard on this because they break real easy. And uh, that's one of my big problems is I get real, uh, I get going and I forget about things like that and I end up breaking these things. Oh, 
we go. So I'm wrapping this rear forward wrap with these. I'm gonna come back with a backward wrap wire so uh, so it kind of holds everything together. Okay, again, right up to the bead. And then I'll do a backward wrap with the, with the wire. About three wraps will do it. Oh. Did you see that? Yeah, you can grab it again. Disregard my last. Looks like crap. Let's see if we can salvage it. This point will be straightforward. about that but it looks it's serviceable don't put this one in a in a frame no <laughs> just be sure okay i'm going to go back to the uh, pheasant again pick out another one of these little guys i like One thing about pheasant feathers, you got to be really careful pulling them, pulling them off like this. I keep looking at the screen, pulling them off like this because right here in the right after, right at the beginning of the marabou type feather, there they will split and break almost every time. So you just have to be really careful. Now I'm going to do a, a soft hackle on this. I want it to go around one wrap. So turn the feather, turn the feather around like this, and about about a quarter of an inch of uh, hackle is all you need right there. The rest of it, a little lower. Oh. The rest of it you can cut off and you can use that. Be sure to leave a little triangle there. Can you see the little triangle? Uh, like that. That's what you can use it to tie to the hook. So the, the colorful side of the feather goes up facing you. That so it will so it will bend backwards naturally. And we'll just tie it right on there behind the bead. And here we go, wrap it around. 
you can lick, wet your fingers a little bit and pull it back. One thing that's important is when you wrap these beads, I've said this before, when you do a soft tackle, make sure you don't cross over the, 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 the stem of the feather because then it'll make your, your fibers go all different directions. So you're, you basically want to, those things to go backwards. Like, like that. Well, that one did just exactly what I didn't want it to do. It's got that long uh, stretch of of red thread there, and I definitely do not like that one. But that, that's the process of building that fly anyway. Um, uh, you guys have any questions about that? Here, I'm gonna put this one on, it looks much better. There, that's better. <laughs> I just tied that. Any questions? <laughs> Wake up! Put a hand there. Put a hand. Horace, could you use Hungarian partridge for that hackle too? You could, but it's this is much big, longer. It's bigger. So if you're if you're going to go to a bigger hook, uh, the ones that I mostly have tied on is tan hook. Um, the Hungarian partridge is not as not long enough. Although if if that's what you like, that would work fine. There's all kinds of great feathers. These brown feathers on the pheasant make great soft hack. Uh, these orange ones here on the, these orange <coughs> ones, see, these are really good spay fly hackles for a soft hackle. Um, there's a lot of uh, old, old style, old time um, spay flies that are tied with these feathers right here. And um, and you know, it's just in your own preference. Give it a try if you like it. I, you know, I do it. And I, I guess if you wanted to tie this fly in a smaller hook on the fourteen, I would go to a partridge half way yeah. Okay. Super. Well, that's.